Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, or the NACC, will be engaging the public through a national consultation as it relates to the national policy on HIV and AIDS. The consultations are expected to bring awareness to the policy and encourage public participation. And so joining me this morning to talk more about it is the technical director of the NACC, Dr. Ayana Sebro. Dr. Hi, Sebro, morning. good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me Of here. course. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's talk about the NACC as it relates to the policy. How long has the committee been organizing this policy? So this policy, um, the first, it came out of the first version of the NACC back in 2010. Mm -hmm. And so we've been, cons um, the, the group has been consulting with the public. We've had a lot of key stakeholder consultations. Mm -hmm. It has been through um, the social uh, community of practice that looks at social policy. Mm -hmm. And we took this policy to cabinet um, in, at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. And it became a green paper. So now we want to seal this as, as policy for Trinidad and Tobago. And this policy, the way that we've is crafted at this point, is looking at how we deal with the inequalities. Mm -hmm. We have been treating with the HIV epidemic in Trinidad and Tobago since about 1983. And how do we end AIDS for 2030? What are the game-changing things we need to do? How do we serve the population? How do we prevent the disease? How do we treat? And how do we support the enabling environment? Yeah. And so the, the Green Paper focuses on the inequalities, as you would mention. Um, are they also going to be focused on discrimination as well? Because I know that was a huge topic when the, the issue of the HIV and AIDS started to become very, very public here in TNT. So this policy has five priority areas. And we want to get feedback from the public on these five priority areas. Advocacy and human rights mm -hmm. is one of the, the big areas in it because we have to look at the environment in which we program for HIV in Trinidad and Tobago and we have to be able to approach this from a public health perspective. Um, so this is, this is a big, big pillar. So it's, uh, stigma and discrimination mm -hmm. is big, yes. Yeah. And what are the other four? The other four pillars are prevention, treatment and care, strategic information, and then policy programming coordination. Yeah. Why is it important to get that public input when developing these policies? So public input is important because policy represents, um, this, is, this is our approach, this is our country's approach to HIV. And so public policy, um, it's important for us to know, for example, how the public is going to respond to some of the things that we may want to do. For example, the policy has for one of the major things in the policy is that we treat everybody for HIV. Anybody who's infected with HIV can have treatment um, for HIV at no cost to them. Um, we also, for example, would say things that we don't promote mandatory testing in Trinidad and Tobago. And so we need to be, we need to be all on board with public policy in terms of, for example, how we educate our children. Um, all of that is included in here, how we would want to change or address laws that would promote perhaps discrimination. All of that is in this policy. And we're he looking to hear from the community in terms of how they support. Is there something that is missing? Because we really want to see how we can get to our goal in 2013. Now, it is listed as a green paper. Is there a reason for that sort of labeling for the policy? So the green paper is that this, this has gone to cabinet. And so cabinet has looked at this and they have approved this vision. For a green paper to go to a white paper, we have to do these additional consultations, have the feedback from the community. And then we revise the policy based on community feedback, so national feedback. And then we submit it to cabinet again, and it will become a white paper. Yeah. Can we switch gears a bit on the rates that we're seeing? You mentioned that we've been battling it since, is it 80s? 83. 1983. And so we're now in 2023. Yes. Uh, are we seeing a decrease? I mean, it has been labeled as an epidemic. Um, so of course, it is, is within the population. But are we seeing our rates decreasing at all? We have seen uh, some of our rates decrease. The prevalence in the 15 to 49 population is about 1%. Um, it varies if you look at male versus female. Um, what, what is interesting is that when we start to split out what's happening with the epidemic in Trinidad and Tobago by groups, if we look at it by people less than 18, mm -hmm. if, we look at it, if we look at people between 15 to 49, we will see different patterns. And then one of, the, one of the things we did this year is we split it by gender and we began to see, for example, where we would have some of our young people fall off 
and, and what we want to do, you know, to strategize for what we would want to do to be able to support those things. But the rates, the prevalence at this point in time is about 1% between 15 to 49 um, age group. And, but we do have some things to do to be able to address what is happening for different groups male and female yes. in different ways. Yeah, um, I know that we're going off course a bit, but as it relates to that male-female ratio, do we have any stats to show exactly where we stand? For male to female, we are still about 50-50 at this particular point in time in yeah. terms of persons who are infected. We have over 7,000 people on treatment at this particular point in time, and we estimate about 11, a little bit more than 11,000 persons, closer to 12. Yeah. Um, but um, living with HIV in Trinidad and Tobago, and what we want to try to do is to be able to determine how we would strategize to be able to support people living with HIV, being getting started on antiretroviral medication on treatment, and how do we support them to stay on treatment. And all of that is important in terms of how we address stigma and discrimination, how we provide services, and how we support persons in the workplace as well as in the community. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of conversation is going to come out of the consultations. Um, is there also going to be conversation as it relates to, because one of the important things you mentioned there was how we teach our children about it. And I know some people are concerned about how we teach our children about contraceptives. So is that going to be one of the conversations we're so having as well? that is, so uh, under, when we, and there's an area there called prevention. And we talk a lot about combination prevention. And yes. combination prevention is more than just testing. Yes. It's education. It's how we provide um, additional medications to prevent um, transmission of disease. And that is a strong component. Um, it is there. So how we get feedback on some of the things that are not there, some of the things we might be concerned about, all of that is what we want to hear from the public because these are the things we would go back to. And this will then also inform our strategic plan. Like after we finish with the policy, how do we get it done? And so how can the public get involved? Um, I know that there's a, con a consultation coming up sometime this week. So we have a consultation tomorrow in Lisa's Gardens Community Center in Coover. Um, the consultation starts between, it runs from 8.30 to 3.30. And for persons to get information, you can register. You can go to nacc.gov.tt. And on our events page, you will see the link. You will see inf information about the consultations. Um, and you can register on the link. The a flyer will come up and you have to close the flyer off and you'll be able to register the information for the consultation tomorrow. It's also on our social media pages. And so we will, um, you, once you register, you can just come to join us um, tomorrow morning at Lisa's Gardens very nice. early and be prepared to share. To share, of yes. course. And just tell us quickly where else we can see um, other consultations taking place. So we will have a consultation in Shaw Park, Tobago, um, Shaw Park Complex in Tobago on the 14th of September. Um, and we hope to also have a virtual um, consultation. You will see we haven't picked a date for the virtual consultation yet. We will put that one up on our social media platform. And of course, we will let everyone know where, when that one will be. And we also hope to have a youth consultation, but yeah. we're still trying to seal the dates for those. We had one last week um, in El Dorado, <laughs> yes, up El Dorado. Yes, and Dr. Sebra, finally, I mean, people coming to the consultations, they may come with their own biases. Any words of advice for the public who are coming down? Uh, is it for them to listen? Is it for them to really, you know, be objective as we, you know, get this green people ready to go to cabinet? So um, I think one of the things, when you go on our website, you will see a policy snapshot. Yeah. And that's going to show you the big picture. Um, and people will have their biases. And so, I mean, everybody's opinion is important. The thing is that what we want to do is we want to be able to serve and support everyone wherever they're at. Once they're within our shores, wherever they're at. And how do we do that? Um, and so I want persons to, to, what I would encourage people is to come with solutions. Come with solutions in terms of what what will you what are what are you saying? How are you putting forward your thoughts in terms of what we can do, and how you will support it? Because when we have this po policy and we have our plan, it's not me or any one particular person that's going to implement it. This is Trinidad and Tobago's policy, and it will be Trinidad and Tobago's plan in terms of how we will end the HIV epidemic for us 
in Trinidad and Tobago. So come with that. Come with a Trinidad and Tobago. I like the power vibe. sign. Come with that. Let's come do it together yeah, as a country. Yeah, we have to do it yes. together as a yeah. country. It's yeah. the only way. It's the only way. And we can't leave anyone behind. If we leave one behind, then that, that just affects all of us. Dr. Sebra, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you get a good showing tomorrow and also all the other consultations taking place because I do believe it is critical for us as a nation. And I like your power sign. We're doing it together. <laughs> thank you so much, yes. <laughs> and that, of course, was Dr. Ayana Sebro, Technical Director of the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, just talking about some public consultations that's taking place as it relates to the HIV and AIDS policy. Remember, you can reach out to the Secretariat at NACCSecretariat at gov.tt or their website at NACC .gov.tt to get more information. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.